What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the channel. We are talking about everything finesse swim baits today, but before we get into it, I gotta show you guys something. If you guys can tell already, we cut the hair off. You get one haircut a year, one of them. The other day was the day, man, I cut her all off. I don't do trims, I just, I get a man cut. I don't trim my long hair, I get her done. So if you want a really good technique on how to catch more bass, Finesse swim baits is by far one of my favorite techniques to throw. And I know I say that about everything, but realistically, I think that every technique is my favorite technique to throw, especially when we're talking bites wise, because I don't really think that, I think I just like catching bass. And so if it means throwing finesse swim baits, hair jigs, uh, jigs, whatever the case may be, I just like catching bass. And so every technique is my favorite technique. So if it gets old hearing me say, oh, that's my favorite technique. Well, guess what? It probably is at the time because it's catching them. My favorite technique for catching bass is gonna be the ones that work. So that's kind of the deal. Unless we're talking Wacky Senko, then I just kind of wanna pull my hair out when I'm fishing that bait because I think I fish way too fast to use that nowadays. Finesse swim baits, man. There's so much to talk about when it comes to it. It's super simple. Like anything else in bass fishing, you can make it very easy or you can make it as complex as you want it to be. For me, I'm a simple guy. I like things to be easy. We'll start off with just the types of swim baits. There's freaking tons of swim baits on the market. How do you know you're getting a good swim bait? How do you separate kind of the doozies from the don'tsies. So for me personally, these are gonna be probably my favorite swim baits to use. And I'm running out as you guys can see, but I think the Mega Bass Spark Shad is by far one of the best paddle tails made on the market today. And then second to which is going to be the Kitek Swing Impact Fat which is one of my favorite swim baits to use. The Kitek Easy Shiner too as well in the four inch model. I love that bait too. So you do got quite a few choices, but if I come down to three choices, it's gonna be first, the Mega Bass Spark Shad, second, the Swing Impact Fat, and then third is probably going to be the Kitek Easy Shiner. And one thing about this channel, guys, is I don't really talk about products that I don't use. I am sponsored by Somatis Baits, but when it comes to swim baits, you know, we don't have a swim bait yet. So we are prototyping one, and I can't really talk too much about it yet. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more, but all in all, we have a freaking sweet swim bait coming to you guys a sweet finesse swim bait and i'm pretty sure you guys are going to like it a lot but for now i'm going to stay away from that i'm just going to talk about the swim baits that i use so going back to you know yes i only talk about the products that i use i would never tell you guys to use something that i don't personally use or tell you how to do something that i don't personally do so i'm not sponsored by any of these companies i don't work with any of these companies um outside of outcast tackle you know mega bass kai tech i don't i do not work with them so this is really what i'm using I'm not trying to sell you guys a product. You know, I really think that Mega Bass and Kitek own the finesse swim bait market. They make by far some of the best ones. And I'm sure that there's others that I'm forgetting. These are the ones that I've used for quite a few years and I absolutely love them. And I don't really like using anything else. But like I said, our Somatis swim bait's coming out very soon and that thing is gonna be a fish catcher. I've already seen pictures of it and played with it just a little bit. The bulk majority of it is gonna be here soon and I really want to make some videos on it. So I'm hoping that I get them like ASAP. So those are the three brands that I like using. And then there's a couple other brands that I haven't really messed around a ton with that I know work pretty good. And that's gonna be the Strike King Rage Tail and the Big Bites Suicide Swimmer. Sorry, it's the Suicide Shad. So this is the Big Bites Suicide Shad, kind of a more bulkier presentation and definitely a wider tail wig, much wider tail wig than your Mega Bass Spark Shad. You know, as you guys can see, if we do a comparison, take a look, those tails are far different from each other. Now, granted, this is a three inch, this is a four inch. The tail wig is definitely gonna be different. Even on the four inch Spark Shads, I don't throw them a ton, but even on the four inch Spark Shads, the tail wig is a little bit narrower compared to these big bite Suicide Shads. I really like these Suicide Shads for fishing in the river. They're super durable. They move a ton of water for being this little finesse swim bait. You get a lot of bites on them. 
They don't seem to rip or tear and they're just an all around good swim bait. Now, haven't really tested them too much out on Mille Lacs for smallmouth. I just have a confidence deal with, with throwing them and I just feel like I get bit way more on these spark shads. But I think with finesse swim baits, it's gonna be all about that tail wig it's gonna be all about that tail wag and the durability. But when it comes to soft plastics, no matter if we're talking swim baits, uh, Cinco's, it does not matter. But when you're talking soft plastics, a lot of people wanna talk about durability mixed with the action of the bait. So durability and mixed with action on the bait. And to me guys, I think that Mega Bass and Kytec, they've really came out with a way to match both of them. Now, Kytec rips super, super easy. That's kind of the downfall of them is that they're not the most durable swim bait on the market. You go through quite a few of them. But again, I do feel like I get quite a few more bites when I throw it. And that's kind of why I stay true to running it. When it comes down to Mega Bass, their spark shads are great. And I think that they are a little bit more durable than the Kytex, in my opinion. Now I do have one little hack with the Mega Bass Spark Shad that I'm gonna show you guys quick. I did not make this up. I seen it on somebody's YouTube channel and I really wish that I could plug them, but I can't remember who it was. So if you're watching this and you know whose idea this was, definitely leave it down below. Drop a link down below that says who's, who's this idea this was because it was not my idea. But I'm gonna show you guys. So what I do to make these spark shads last a heck of a lot longer is I just put a wacky band on them. Gosh, do I have one with it? My wacky tool's buried somewhere right now. That's what it'll look like. And you pinch this back here, put the band on back here, and it kind of stops it and doesn't let it like tear. Now, that is gonna make your swim baits last a million times longer. It's pretty cool how much longer they last. I really like using this trick. I don't feel like it changes the tail wig. I don't feel like it changes the action of the bait. I think it looks just the same. I know a lot of guys that talk about how the eyes, you know, you got your, your two eyes right here and you got two, two eyes on the gold, golden eye. And so what I know a lot of guys that are OCD about it, they'll cut, you know, a little quarter inch off where the eye is and just stick it on the head. That's always an option. You can do that. I'm not really that OCD. I think it just gives it a little bit more flash and I don't think that the fish really care if it's there or not, but that's how I like to run my spark shad is just on something like this. When we're talking swim bait colors, how do I select my colors? It's gonna have a lot to do with just the water clarity. Um, is the water clear? Is it stained? Is it dirty? And then the size of the forge that's in that system. And you know, that size of the forge that's in the system, it definitely goes hand in hand with the time of year. You know, when I'm fishing Mille Lac, so I'm gonna refer to that lake a lot and you can correlate it with the bodies of water that you want to. But when we're talking Mille Lac's Lake, typically in the springtime, I'm using smaller swim baits. You know, the perch fry is really small on the lake at that time. They're chasing around smaller stuff. You know, everything's just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna use and downsize a lot. So if there's a lot of like shiners, you know, shiner minnows in the lake, I might go to that white. And if there's a lot of perch in the lake, I might run a perch pattern or maybe like a green pumpkin, maybe like a green pumpkin color, something like that, or a darker color. It just really depends on the forage in the lake and what I'm looking at as far as water clarity goes. I'm a lax. That's a place where I bring cloud cover into it as well. So if it is cloudy, I like running just a little brighter swim bait like these white ones. And honestly, this is what I've been running the majority of the springtime is gonna be this white color. And then if there is a lot of sunlight out, I still will run this white color, but what I've noticed on some of my guide trips is that darker color does produce a few more bites when we are running it in clear, calm conditions. That could have something to do with water clarity. It could have something to do with a lot. I'm not really sure, but that's kind of how I do my color selection is it's all based on water clarity and colors of forage, stuff like that. That's how I'm gonna choose my color. All right, so size of the swim baits. How do you select the size of the swim baits? Now, if you guys look here, I'll show you guys. We have all sorts of different lengths. You know, we have some 2.75 inches. 2.8 inches, 4 inch, 3 inch, 3.3, 3.8, 2.8. How the hell do you select your size? 
it's gonna be the same thing as before. Depends on the forage and the lay. You know, if the perch fry is really small, I might use a smaller size minnow, but oftentimes, guys, I really found that like between the three and the four inch, you can't really go wrong. As an all around like general idea, I love the three inch spark shads, but when it comes to running like a four inch, you know, a four inch swim bait, that's when I'll run those, those Kitek swing impacts. Basically when it comes to size, as a general rule of thumb, in the springtime, I like using smaller baits. As the summer progresses and we get into fall, that's when you'll see me run like four, four and a quarters, four eights. I might even run like five inch swim baits in the fall time. It just really depends on what's going on and how the weather's changing and everything like that. But size is really simple, man. Just match it, match the hatch as best you can. Obviously, the more you upsize that bait, you know, you're probably gonna get yourself in a position where you can get a little bit better quality bites. That is possible, but as a general rule of thumb, I do like running a three inch swim bait. So I find that that works. If you were just gonna buy one swim bait for the entire year, I would buy a three inch swim bait. All right, so the next important thing is gonna be the head. What type of head are you guys using for your swim baits? And for me personally, I'm gonna rely heavily on the Outcast Tackle Goldeneye, and there's a couple reasons why. Now, number one, I'm obviously sponsored by Outcast. I've been working with them for a little while now. I love their jigs, I love their Goldeneye head. It's perfect, man. If you look at the ingenuity of this head, it is just made to go through boulders and for me being on Malax Lake and guiding out there I'm constantly fishing over rock and in order to get bites sometimes you got to bang this thing off the rocks and get it to come cleanly through the rocks when you're fishing paddle tails there's a couple different ways you can fish it you can drag it you can you know just coast it along the bottom but regardless I really think that it's important to have this thing bouncing off boulders another reason why I run outcast heads is because they come in multiple different sizes not just the weights of the heads they also have multiple hook sizes in the heads which I think is crucial and important especially when we're talking about swim bait sizes in matching up the size of the swim bait to the size of the hook that you're using is obviously super important so if you guys look right here is a 3 16 ounce golden eye and i got a three hook in it that three hook pairs perfectly with that three inch spark shot here's another example so this is a quarter ounce golden eye i fished this i use this pre-spawn in deeper spots for smallmouth right now this is a one hook right here and look at how small that is. So this is a 2.75 inch, or no, a 2.8 inch Kitek swing impact. And I got that on the golden eye, but it's a quarter ounce to one hook. So look at how perfectly that fits. Now, when you're rigging these swim baits up, the biggest mistake that you can make while you're rigging these things up is using a jig head with a hook that's way too long for the bait that you're trying to put on. Because what happens is, the further down this tail that you get the hook into, the worse that tail weight gets, the more likely it is to curl around the hook. And that equals, you know, a dead cast basically. But we don't want, we don't want dead casts, right? The further down this hook goes, the worse off you are. It just makes the action terrible on the swim bait and it makes that swim bait get caught inside the hook and it really just creates problems. So being able to match the hook size up with your swim bait is absolutely crucial. So that's another reason why I like Outcast Golden Eyes is because you can get multiple different hook sizes for multiple different size heads, which is perfect. Big lesson in rigging your swim baits is having a jig head, but having the right size hook to match however many inches that swim bait may be. Now, like I said before, I really love my Outcast Golden Eyes, but if I'm going to use a different style head, it's gonna be the Mega Bass Okashira head. And basically the only time that I run this Okashira head is when I'm gonna get ultra dirty shallow water. We're talking six, seven feet or less. The only reason why I'm using it is because it comes in a 332nd size. So Outcast goes all the way down to eighth. And then once I start using these Okashira heads by Mega Bass, that's when I'm gonna go down to that 332nd size. That honestly is the perfect size for fishing that you know, six to eight feet of water. One thing that I like about the 332nd size too is sometimes those fish are feeding up. 
And when they come on and off of those bug hatches, when you look at them in the water, they're still positioned in the middle of the water column. That means to me that they're still trying to look up and feed. That's when, you know, in 12 feet of water, I might throw this 332nd in really slow roll. It's so dang slow. I think that that's perfect for the post spawn bite. You can just get a ton of bites doing it that way, especially turns funky fish into biting fish. And that's kind of what my thing is out there is to turn, get those fish into biters. So this Okashira head is the spin head. So it's got that little prop on it and as you guys can see if you look at this head there's two different sizes to the blades you got a smaller blade and you got a, a longer blade over here I, one thing that i found is that this blade really does want to spin very very well the okashira head comes with a pretty good hook on it look at that she's she's sticky she's pretty sticky and so that's kind of how i like to rig that okashira head is just something like that just with the standard you know 3.3 inch or a three inch spark chad is absolutely perfect i think that the, the three inch spark chad was like made for the okashira head it's definitely a great pair i don't have that on right now so the next swim bait head i have is an underspin i started using a ton now this this underspin is by great lakes finesse it's a sweet underspin man i, I it's got an ultra uber sharp uber sticky sharp hook on it i believe it's gamagatsu but i'm not 100 for sure i'm not sponsored by these guys but man do they make a great product this thing spins really wild i think that this will perform great during a mayfly hatch or during the post spawn time now this is a 3 16th i got a 2.75 inch strike king rage swimmer on the back of it and i just ultra slow roll it again man i think that in this especially when the fish are you know, in between, I just think that I get a lot more bites when I really, really, really try my hardest to slow roll that bait and get it to get it to wind down just a little bit. I think that I get a ton more bites that way and it works great. All right, so when we talk about the use for finesse swim baits, obviously we got the heads. You can throw them on A rigs and you can drop shot swim baits. You know, drop shot and big swim baits is definitely a, a pretty cool thing. And whenever I drop shot, swim baits i'm gonna drop shot on the hazardong shad three inch two i'll drop shot one of these little you know kai tech swing impact fats definitely a great way to catch them too as well now as far as the rod goes i think that you know you could use your drop shot rod for it i use my drop shot rod i do like something with just a little bit more parabolic bend something that bends down pretty good and that's kind of how i like to fish it so even though I got a net head tied on this, this is definitely gonna be one of my rods of choice for throwing a swim bait. It's a seven foot three medium, medium, but it does have pretty parabolic, it's got pretty parabolic action on it. The Daiwa Tatula 4000 is definitely a great reel, super far casting distance on it, better line management with the 4000 series spool. And for being the Daiwa Tatula LT, it's light and tough, man. It's a great reel to use. Personally, haven't bought a 3000 series since I bought my first 4000 series, if that makes any sense to you guys. So I've really became fond of the 4000 series reel. I remember when I switched from 2500 to 3000, and then from 3000 to 4000, every time I've never looked back. Yes, 3000 still has its place for some applications. I do use it for like, some tube fishing and some drop shotting, but for the most part, it's all 4,000s nowadays. Like I said before, there's multiple, multiple, multiple ways to do this, but this is kind of my way to do it as far as this goes. And yes, guys, I know that there are there probably are other techniques or ways that you can rig these swim baits. But like I said, man, I wanna keep it simple. I wanna keep it easy so people can catch bass and they don't have to think too much about it. Usually bass fishing turns like haywire when you try to make it way more than what it's supposed to be. And that's just the bottom line. So let's keep it super simple, super basic, so we can put more bass in the boat and not be as stressed out trying to overthink things way too much. I think that that's when people get themselves into trouble and they make it to where they can't catch as many bass. All right guys, so if you guys like this video, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. That's a great way to support the channel and it's free, 100% free, doesn't cost you a dollar. Like and subscribe to the video. And if you guys are interested in any of the products in this video, I'm gonna link them below, you can get them. Any baits, any tackle that's purchased in this video, it helps my channel. And I really greatly appreciate it if you guys order them through the links. I'll put all direct links below that have all the equipment down there. You guys can just directly click on it, it takes you right to where you need to go. 
order it up. If you guys are looking to book a guide trip, my June is starting to get shot. It's almost, it's almost done. I only have so much availability in June and it's gonna go by the wayside pretty soon here. Get a hold of me, send me a message through either Instagram or Facebook, private message me, or you guys can email me at samrenfishing at gmail.com and I'd be happy to get you guys out on the Lax Lake and put some big small mouth in the boat, breaking PBs daily, I love it. Let's get you guys out on the water and catch more bass. Don't forget, like and subscribe to the video and we'll see you guys out on the water.